Hi, everyone. We are Group 22, and we are very excited to propose our ideas to everyone today. Our product is Easy Tablet. Hi, so this is our team. I'm Kaylee. I'm Maddie. And I'm Sam. <laughs> um, I'm Sorry about that. I need. Um, so the geriatric age group, being the oldest, is the most susceptible to complications and disease. The geriatric population has increased from 40 to 65 million people over the last 10 years and is projected to further explode into the future. 80% of this population has at least one chronic condition and 65% have two. It's this 80% of the population that is our target audience. Nate, if you could advance to the next slide, please. And the one after that. I apologize, we're having some technical difficulties. One moment. Nate wasn't able to hear the presentation, so I'm going to turn on my um, microphone to next to him. Okay, ready? All right, go two slides forward, please. Yep, that's the one. Okay, so many chronic conditions <clears throat> common in the elderly population, such as hypertension, heart disease, and high cholesterol, are linked to poor nutritional practices. 36% of healthcare spending in 2016 was allocated to geriatric patients, despite the elderly only comprising 16% of the general population. Improving nutrition monitoring and education are important preventative measures, and this upstream monitoring is crucial to preventing the development of disease. This in turn will lower healthcare expenditures in the long run. COVID-19 is, is exacerbating racial disparities and causing providers to shift increasingly to telehealth platforms. So solutions must address disparities and provide safe and equitable plans to give nutritional resources to the elderly population. Next slide, please. So our main concern is dietary imbalances um, in the elderly population, and these may not be detected by simply measuring an individual's vital signs and many nutritional problems among this population are caused by physiological changes, neurodegenerative diseases, medications, and declines in taste. One of the most pressing challenges associated with this population is a widespread lack of technological skills, so solutions must be user-friendly and must be designed for the elderly. Additionally, disparities driven by socioeconomic factors affect black, the black elderly individuals at an alarming rate, and the social determinants of health, such as age, race, and gender, greatly influence health outcomes and must be addressed as they're the leading cause behind disparities in geriatric care. It must also be recognized that there is a widespread distrust um, in communities of color regarding medical professionals and a widespread distrust of technology among el the elderly population in general. This issue therefore requires an intersectional approach to combat disparities in geriatric care so our solution must be designed to address the unique forms of discrimination and privilege that influence health outcomes. Thanks, Maddie. The first part of the framework to our solution is an initial analysis of the patient through consultation by a nutritionist. The purpose of the analysis will be to take a number of uh, variables into consideration to build the patient's profile and nutritional needs. These variables include current underlying conditions, possible future conditions, height, weight, and information collected from an initial nutritional test. The next step will be working like, uh, with a company like Meals on Wheels. Um, they would be able to provide and deliver the custom meals to our patients based off of their personalized nutritional recommendations. Next, the patients will be tracking what they eat. The meals provided will have barcodes or QR codes, which will be scannable by provided hardware automatically input food data to track consumed food more accurately, rather than simply relying on complete patient input. 
Recommendations, lastly, recommendations can be modified over time to prevent foreseen developing deficiencies and to continually address current and new conditions. Our solution therefore presents to the client as an app loaded onto a tablet. Tablets are configured to be low maintenance, low cost and low skill designed with the technologically troubled in mind. The tablet will be a one-stop shop for all things nutrition. An app loaded onto this tablet would enable the client to take full advantage of our program. Our main goal in developing this app is to accommodate our least tech savvy client. We want this app to feel as obvious as possible to the user with simple tap to click interactions, forward and backward navigation, no hidden menus, and a high contrast color scheme and large fonts to accommodate declining vision in geriatric clients. I've always felt the user interfaces are like jokes. If you need to explain it to your grandmother, it's probably not very good. We've also designed some mockups of our software to walk through the functionality. We have a simple landing page presenting the client upfront with all the features they need to operate our app. No hidden menus, no small buttons. First and foremost, our app provides the client with the ability to order meals through Meals on Wheels, which will be discussed more later. Clients will be able to view a list of recommended meals as well as each meal's nutritional information. They can place an order for meals they want and view the percent match to the client's nutritional profile. This profile is compiled from two sources, the first being the client's own taste in food, what they enjoy eating. The second is a list of nutrients the client needs, which is sourced from an aforementioned blood test and nutritional consultation. The client will be able to schedule appointments with the CNS board certified nutritionist, view their past and future appointments, and meet over video chat, taking full advantage of the growing telehealth industry, which provides a more equitable solution to work to rural clients and clients for whom finding transportation is difficult. Next, our clients will be able to record meals they've consumed, either by easily scanning the bar or QR code with a camera, or for meals consumed in other settings, the client will be able to input the components of the meal for which nutritional values can be estimated. The goal of recording meals is to ensure that clients are maintaining their nutritional health as an important preventative measure as upstream monitoring is crucial to prevent the development of diseases. This in turn will lower healthcare expenditures in the long run. The client will also be able to build a contact list of friends and family and the tablet will enable them to connect these people hassle-free without the complications of other video chatting apps. We also plan to incorporate visual and auditory reminders to the app, reminding clients to eat a meal, drink water, and take medication. We estimate that the hardware will cost $200 for a simple Android tablet, and the software will cost $200,000 to, to initially develop. Paired with a conservative estimate of 2,000 customers in the first year would result in a cost of $300 per uploaded tablet. We think that we could charge $500 per tablet to our clients. Nutritionists charge $75 an hour, um, though that would be a periodic cost to our clients. Now on to Kaylee with more information on our partnership with Meals on Meals. Thanks, Nate. Um... So as Nate and Sam both mentioned earlier, we're planning on doing a corporate partnership with a nonprofit food delivery company, Meals on Wheels. We have similar values to this company, which we think makes us great partners. Um, we're looking to provide um, nutrition, a nutrition solution for the geriatric population, and so are they. Um, we were considering partnering with a for-profit um, food delivery service like Freshly or Blue Apron, but we wanted to partner with a company that would make nutritious food accessible to our lower income clients. That being said, this partnership with Meals on Wheels would be mutually beneficial. Meals on Wheels would advertise our company to their clients and we would donate a portion of our revenue that we received from those advertisements um, to their cause. In addition to pro um, providing them with our in-depth nutrition information about our clients that, would, that they could then use um, when preparing the meals. So now we're going to take a look at some implementation considerations. So in terms of implementation, we want to ensure that the product is accessible to individuals with differing socioeconomic statuses. And so to accomplish this, we will apply to enroll our product 
and our telehealth services as Medicare providers. Our nutrition consult services are covered under Medicare Part B, which includes an initial nutrition ses assessment and follow-up visits. Medicare also covers telehealth services if the nutritional professional is consulting a client in a rural area and durable med medical equipment, such as our tablet, is covered by Medicare. Medigap is also a viable option for our clients. So most private insurance companies will cover nutrition services if referred by a medical professional. And although private health insurance plans are not required to cover durable medical equipment, many do, so consumers will need to check with their plan provider. In order to finance our program, we will apply for two federal grants from the Health Resources and Services Administration, um, and both are currently open for registration. So the first is the evidence-based telehealth network program in which eligible applicants must utilize telehealth technologies to serve rural populations. And the second is the telehealth centers of excellence grant uh, in which eligible applicants must serve medically underserved populations. So as demonstrated in our product description, we cater to both rural and underserved populations. And therefore our services are eligible for either or both of these funding resources. And then the products will be made primarily of variable costs at the start. And this is to prevent large financial risks if there are lulls in sales when the product first launches. It is important to also address possible roadblocks or ramifications that a proposed solution may face during implementation. Ethically, our service can be difficult to access and afford for uninsured individuals. However, as of 2018, only 1.6% of all uninsured Americans were above the age of 65, which is uh, which comprises of our target audience. Um, Meals on Wheels is um, additionally Meals on Wheels is only available to those who qualify for the program. This includes homebound individuals and those without access to a daily caregiver. Since incomplete nutrition is widespread, our target audience likely falls outside of the scope. Um, financially. Um, more money goes into treatment than preventative measures. And since our target audience has underlying conditions, um, they fall into the, uh, into the treatment category uh, in that sense. For clinical development, Meals on Wheels um, may not have the amount of individual meal specialization uh, that our solution requires, which may create a problem with that specific partnership. Um, and finally, Components such as the hardware development of the software and personnel needed to set up the system and provide consultations could prove costly past insurance coverage, which um, would then incur additional costs above the, uh, upon the person. Okay, great. So moving on to our competitors in the, um, in the nutrition market, there are three main categories of competitors that we want to mention. The first being traditional in-person nutritionists. These nutritionists have the pro of offering one-on-one -on -one attention to their clients. However, there's some disadvantages that need to be addressed. It can be difficult for elderly people living in rural areas to access in-person nutritionists. There's also a limited supply um, compared to the growing um, geriatric population's demand. We plan on addressing this by using telehealth to give our clients the necessary information while um, still being accessible to people in rural areas. Also, the use of nutrition monitoring will decrease the need of constant consultations, helping with the supply issue. The next category of competitor that we want to address is online articles and books. Um, these are great because people can learn at their own pace and then also online articles are free. However, um, a lot of this won't be personalized and also online articles can be contradictory, especially if they're not written by um, a professional. We will address these issues by making detailed profiles for our clients and ensuring that our nutritionists are CNS board certified. The last category of competitor um, is applications like Nutrium. Nutrium is a phone application, which is very accessible. However, we know that a large portion of our clients will not have um, smartphones. So we wanted to address this um, by providing tablets to our clients and making it very user-friendly. In addition to our current um, competition, it's also important to mention the increased use of telehealth while treating geriatric patients due to COVID-19. There have been notable developments here, um, primarily in primary care, which may create another category um, of nutrition competitors in the near future. Um, so in summary of our presentation, we are looking to create a tablet that monitors the nutritional status of our clients 
and easily provides nutritionists with a way to correct the client's diets depending on their needs. This is important because of the increasing demand of geriatric nutritionists and the lack of supply. The telehealth solution will allow us to help a broader range of clients and we truly believe in our solution. Thank you. Great, thank you so much for that great presentation. Um, this was very interesting. I specifically like the fact that you guys are focusing on a device included solution already. This might be helpful for people who don't already use devices um, and, and makes it easier to distribute the solution as well. So one question I had was around the meals on wheels aspect that you guys are talking about. Um, it is interesting, they definitely have a large footprint and therefore is a good go-to-market strategy. But I did have two questions around them. Did you first, did you speak to them about, again, just from a general research angle for this concept development, did you have any information from them or about them through somebody else? We didn't speak directly to Meals on Wheels, but we did do some, um, some research into their company. Okay. Um, and we looked at their other current partnerships and they're partnering with um, many companies like Home Depot and Subaru. Um, they have uh, partners that are sponsors and then they also have partners that are strategic partners. So we thought this was a good avenue to investigate. Yeah, okay. So that's interesting because the main question I had on that angle was, would they be able to customize meals for each senior based on their medical condition? Because there are separate organizations that I know of that do medically tailored meals, but uh, I wasn't sure if Meals on Wheels was doing that already. It might be doing it for specific partnerships, but that's one thing I'm curious to know. And then the mm -hmm. second aspect is around the advertising. Again, are they doing this already? Um, my main question there is how does it fit with their mission um, of nonprofit? And um, I'm, I'm just unsure if that fits with their overall mission and if it's a possibility. Yeah, these are some great questions. So we looked into the process of applying for um, a Meals on Wheels meal. So um, they do ask for different underlying conditions that you have already and different factors about yourself, including your preferences. Um, so we do know to a certain extent already that they are customizing their meals um, depending on the person's needs. So we thought that that was um, definitely something that we could help them explore further um, and that would be beneficial. Um, in addition, they are, um, I mean, they're showing that their, their partners online on their website, um, and that is a form of advertisement. But um, if it's not possible to go any further with Meals on Wheels and we further discover roadblocks, then we decided that um, we could further investigate different avenues with other um, food delivery companies. Thank you. Yeah, I really liked your presentation and your focus on um, equity and diverse populations. I think that's a really critical part of this. So kudos to that. Um, just could you talk about the data collection piece and any HIPAA or privacy requirements that you think would be integrated? We <laughs> Uh, so I, I don't know a ton about HIPAA. I do know that it protects, uh, I, don't, I can't hear anything right now. Okay, so uh, I do know that if a patient agrees to a blood test um, and provides us the ability to use that information, then we could use it to build that prof profile. Um, additionally, we would build our app to be secure so that uh, the patient information that is stored within the nutritional profile um, would only be shared with the client. Um, any confirmed uh, kind of uh, guardians and the board certified nutritionist that is providing care to the client. I don't know. I, I hope that answers your question, but it does. I was uh, seeing, you know, how much of the, the private data would be shared with, say, Meals on Wheels or something like that outside yeah. of that. 
that does yeah, the, the goal would be to have to, yeah. so the goal would be to have only information meals on wheels is getting is uh the specific meal that the client has ordered terrific thank you yeah Yeah, um, I appreciated the, uh, the presentation. Y'all did a really great job, and um, I think it's a great idea. I um, also, your attention to structural uh, social determinants of health and equity issues is um, really important, and I wondered if you'd considered language access as far as presenting the material in more than one language. Yeah, um, I, I do know that translating is becoming a, an easier and easier task these days. So certainly adding uh, multi-language support uh, is certainly an option. I could definitely see that being useful uh, in areas where it is not fully English. Um, the, the English language is not the most common language um, and, and doing our best to support people from all walks of life, however capable they may be in technology uh, language, basically, accommodate everybody as best we can. We will also make sure that the nutritionists um, and the consult services are provided in different languages. Great. Um, okay, that was awesome. Thank you so much. I will have you guys stick around for a few more minutes just in case there's any other last minute questions. Um, and just for your information, at 12 p.m., we will be having a networking session um, with a lot of our collaborators, and you can meet the other participants as well. Um, so that should be super fun. So we'd love to see you there. And then otherwise, at 1 p.m., we'll be having our keynote speaker address as well as awards. So we'll see you then. Yes, Elizabeth, did you have a question? I did have one more, just kind of. Okay, uh, yeah, please go for it. Is the barcode recording just the amount that's been eaten? Is that what the, what, what was the function of the, I like the idea, but I couldn't fully capture the function of, of that um, scanning the barcode. So yeah, the bar, oh, yeah, oh, you go Sam. Yeah, I can take this one. Um, so the idea behind the barcode was to mitigate as much as possible the manual input of data by the patients, because we all know that, like I, I've tried to track my meals before and I oh, can't even get everything right. Yeah. yeah, like like it's it's hard. So obviously we can't monitor automatically everything that a patient eats, but if we take at least at a minimum the meals that we provide and we know that are like that that we gave them, um, the barcode will transfer the data of everything in that meal package from the a nutritional standpoint as a total. And um, I see. Yeah. So that at a minimum, even if even if a patient doesn't record manually other things they eat, um, that right there will is a good step. That's a good first step for um, for recording this, as much as possible. This will also be to try to limit um, reporting bias within our patients. Yes. That's it. So the barcode includes all the nutritional information for the meal that they've eaten and that will upload for the nutritionist to be able to see. Yes, yes. The purpose is to be as, as, a, as automatic as possible. Yeah, that's a great feature. Thank you. Uh, just to clarify, so the, the meals that we have, that we offer, we would already have the nutritional contents of each meal and the barcode would simply just be letting the app know, okay, this meal was eaten. We just ate baked salmon. And so the, the nutritional contents of baked salmon would be added. It's not like the information is encoded in the barcode. It's we have a, a kind of a data set of what's in each meal and then corresponding to that, yeah. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, that concludes our pitches for the morning. So we will now be taking around a 35 minute break for lunch. Um, and at 12 p.m. we will reconvene. Judges, we will send you the link for 
your discussion hour and participants. We will, we hope to see you for our networking event. Um, again, thank you so much team for presenting. That was an awesome presentation. Um, and yeah, thank you. I look forward to seeing you guys in a bit. Thank, thank you so much, everyone. Thank, thank you. you all. Sorry about the technical difficulties at the Don't start. worry, <laughs> it's the era of Zoom. Don't worry at all. Thank you. Have a nice day. Take care.